Welcome to our YouTube channel titled Vinyl City Broadcasting, your transit express to rock and roll trivia. I'm Marie, the host of VCB. Rico wants me to catch the train to Jersey City today and shoot some pictures of the neighborhood, especially the Palace Theater, where today's VCB guest grew up and made his first public appearance. Have you been there? According to our special guest today, New York, Jersey City, and Philly were the hub of the a cappella movement and a part of the a cappella corridor. Oh, I hear the train pulling down below. I got to run. I need to catch the PATH train over to Grover Street, Jersey. Rico, PATH train just pulled into the station. I'll call you when I get to the theater. Stand clear of the closing doors, please. Uh, Rico, I walk down to 174 Newark Avenue and I don't see the Palace Theater. Why don't I ask this gentleman that's standing across from me? Sir, I think I'm lost. I'm looking for the Palace Theater, but all I see is an empty parking lot across the street and Palace Drugs next to it. Rico, this kind man looked at me funny and told me that the Palace Theater hasn't been there in 50 years. I think I'm out of here. Hey, welcome back, Marie. Did you bring back some pictures of our guest's old neighborhood? Um, we need to get to Jersey City a little more often, Rico. The old neighborhood is not what it used to be, and I'm talking literally. But, you know, there is something that hasn't changed in the last 50 years. Do you know there's still groups singing out on the street corners, down in the subways, both young and old? I heard them. So cool. All of them keeping the music alive. That was the highlight of my trip, Rico. Well, let's start the show, Marie, and we'll chat a little bit more later on, okay? Okay. And today, we have the pleasure of interviewing a friend of ours, Abe Santiago, independent filmmaker, author, and a cappella singer. Abe performed with an a cappella group back in Jersey City during the 60s called The Concepts. He has also written a number of books and produced a DVD on a cappella, all with Ray reviews. His first book, A Cappella Street Corner Vocal Groups, was awarded Best of 2006 Award from SoulPatrol.com and the Black Standard Music Award in 2011. His DVD titled Street Corner Harmony is a documentary film that was nominated for Best Documentary Film at the Golden Door International Film Festival of 2011 in Jersey City. But the book we are highlighting in this interview is his new book titled A Cappella Living in the Shadows 1963 to 1973 A Social History. Now we're going to show you first a little slideshow which will set the a cappella stage for the interview. The pictures will encompass the books and video mentioned above along with some cool pictures of Jersey City, Abe's hometown, and some of the a cappella groups from that time period. Some are even still performing today. Now picture yourself standing in the line outside the Palace Theater to get inside to see the concepts 
and other a cappella groups. Have you got your tickets? Okay. Well, you can come in. Run the slideshow, Rico. Now we have a visual image in your mind of that time period. And let's run the interview I did with Abe a few weeks back via video broadcasting. Listen for some of the groups that we showed you in the slideshow. Run that interview, Rico. Hello, Abe. You're looking well. First of all, I'd like to welcome you to our YouTube channel, Vinyl City Broadcasting. Rico asked me prior to this interview to go to Jersey City and shoot some pictures and get a feel for the neighborhood that you grew up in. I feel like a Jersey girl now. So let's start from the beginning, Abe. Tell us a little bit about your background, vocal group harmony. And were there any groups or individuals that were instrumental in your a cappella journey? Also, how was the Palace Theater a springboard to your career? Thank you, Marie, for the wonderful introduction. And thank you for allowing me to be here on Vinyl City Broadcasting. I really appreciate it. Well, let me start off, Marie, First with my uh, background, I was born in New York City and I was raised in Jersey City, New Jersey. And music was always a part of my life. Uh, ever since I entered school, in grammar school, I've always loved singing. And it wasn't until uh, the mid-1950s, like 1956, 1957, when rock and roll burst on the scene that I really, really became interested in vocal group singing, especially groups like Frankie Lyman and the Teenagers, uh, Little Anthony and the Imperials, the Five Satins, the Cadillacs. They had such an influence uh, on my psychic. And uh, I really believe that it, it, it implanted a DNA R&B in my soul because I just totally became involved and loved vocal group singing, even though I didn't know anything about it. And uh, from then on, I, I would go to the store and buy records, 45s, buy, you know, uh, buy groups like, you know, the Flamingos, the, the Dubs, you name it. It was, it was just, it was just part of me. And by the time I went into high school, uh, 
I still love that vocal group sound. And when I was in grammar school, I had a friend of mine, uh, Ed Rivera, and he and I both sang in grammar school together. And then when we entered high school, we were both involved in our high school choir and in a high school ensemble. And uh, uh, we met a couple other guys, Juan Perez and Ahmed Valentine, and we got together and we formed a group. Our first group was called the Five Latins, even though we're, even though we're, even though there was just four of us. But we called ourselves the Five Latins, and we made our, our very first recording, a demo recording, in Newark, New Jersey. But then shortly afterwards, we changed our name to the Concepts, and uh, we started singing in people's homes. We started singing at banquet halls. We started singing uh, people's weddings and so forth. And we really started to become popular in the downtown area. And then the, um, the springboard that really uh, propel propelled us was when we sang at the Palace Theater in downtown Jersey City on Newark Avenue. We sang there the first time and it was a great success. Then we sang again. They invited us again the second time to sing at the Palace Theater. And that in a sense kind of skyrocketed us to, to uh, among, among uh, our friends and, and acquaintances. And it was during that time period that we met Stan Krause, who had a record shop in, uh, in Journal Square in, in Jersey City. And uh, that's how it all began for us when we first started singing uh, in Jersey City. We have the same DNA, Abe. Now I know why Rico wanted to send me to Jersey City to the Palace Theater. Unfortunately, it wasn't there. Now, where did a cappella fit into the music scene at that time? Also, wasn't the 60s a turbulent time period, especially for this genre of music? Acapella was like in the shadows of big name record companies that were taking over mainstream music, wasn't it? Now in terms of your question, what was it like during, during the 1960s? Well, during the 1960s, there was a lot of musical genres that was that was floating through the whole USA. Uh, in Detroit, you had the Motown sound. In Memphis, you had the Memphis sound, like Otis Redding and people like, people like that. On the West Coast, you have the surfing sound. And then you have the Beatles with the British sound. And you had folk music. And there were so many musical genres that was going on that at least from my perspective it was one of the most creative times uh, uh, in music history was during the 1960s and out of this out of this eruption of musical talent came a cappella a cappella as a pop commercial genre uh, and it began in the New York metropolitan area, New York, Jersey City, Philadelphia. That was kind of the hub of, of a cappella. And it stretched from Boston all the way to the Philadelphia, Pittsburgh area. That was, it was called the a cappella, a cappella corridor. And it was during that time period that guys who sang on street corners were now in a recording studio making a commercial recording. It was the first time ever anything ever happened like that before. It never happened like that before. So we had guys who were singing on street corners, guys who were singing on platforms were now, were now being recorded in a recording studio and making commercial a cappella recordings. And as a result of that, a whole new industry erupted, a whole new industry exploded like a volcano 
for the first time, a cappella, as we know today, a cappella as a pop genre, began in 1963, and singing groups were making commercial recordings. Their songs were being uh, played on the radio, and and young people, teenagers, were going to shows to hear and see a cappella singing groups, and it just exploded all over the East Coast. But they were doing this in the shadows of the big name singing groups, big name stars, and big name record companies. That's great acapella history, Abe. Eh? Now, why don't you tell us about your new book titled Acapella Living in the Shadows? 1963 to 1973, a social history, and tell us how we can purchase it. Uh, Marie, just let me just uh, wrap up a little bit about my book and just give you a real brief summary of what, uh, what it contains. Uh, like I mentioned before, it's a history of a cappella as a pop genre during the 1960s. And it includes an array of groups, groups like, no, like the Notations, the Persuasions, the Royal Counts, the Heartaches, the Five Jades, um, the Zircons, the Five Sharks, and, and many other groups. And uh, those groups were by far excellent and great groups, and they could have been um, real super groups, but things like um, money and these small independent labels really couldn't do that much to promote these groups and others uh, where it could have been. And they were all just singing in the shadows of the big name record companies and record artists. I also cover of uh, things like uh, the new sound that the a cappella groups produced. And I cover things like um, how the music has been, uh, at least from my perspective, has been gentrified. I use the word gentrified. And so I cover just a lot of things. I cover uh, a host of things. Uh, and I think it's, it's really an instructional book that everyone should have. And the book can be purchased by going to uh, Amazon, Amazon.com. It also could be purchased at uh, Walmart and also Barnes and Noble. So that's basically a summary of, of, of what the book is about. I got my copy right in front of me, Abe, and it's going right into our a cappella library. So what's this new project that Rico told me about that you're working on, Abe? Can you discuss it at all? Yes, uh, Marie, I do have a project, uh, and, I'm, and I thank you for just reminding me. Um, I'm putting my pen down for a while, and I'm working on a new project. I don't have all the details, and all my uh, pieces are not uh, in place right now but what I plan to do and I don't want to reveal it but maybe I can re reveal it next time if you allow me to be on your show um, maybe I can reveal a, just just what I'm trying to do it, it'll what I'm trying to do is basically um, commemorate the groups of the 1960s the street corner groups who sang during the 1960s and uh, that's all I can tell you. I just wanted to acknowledge those groups, and I'm working on a project. I'm working on a project in which uh, they will be acknowledged as those who preserved the group sound uh, during the 1960s. So as I uh, get my pieces uh, together and have them in place, I'll I'll just announce a little bit more uh, and give you uh, what I'm planning to to do and what I'm planning to develop uh, uh, 
uh, in the near future. But right now, I don't have all the pieces together, but it is a project of recognizing and acknowledging the a cappella groups of the 1960s and what they did. Uh, uh, and it'll be forthcoming, maybe, you know, maybe a little bit down the road. And I also want to say, Marie and Rico, thank you for allowing me here to be on Vinyl City Broadcasting. And it's great to be uh, in your studio and to be, uh, be able to share a little bit about my book and in what's going to happen in the future. And I thank you so much. Thought. Didn't that interview with Abe spur you to go immediately to Amazon, Barnes & Noble, or Walmart to purchase his book tonight. Rico and I have known Abe for years, but we have never met him personally, just through social media and on the phone. Rico and him talk about once a month, especially when Rico needs his a cappella fix. But he says, I feel I've known Abe all my life. And he says it's because we have a common bond, the love of this beautiful art form called a cappella. We've got the same DNA, Abe. Well, it's about that time, Rico. We want to thank Abe Santiago for sharing a little about his past, present, and what the future holds for him. We'll be waiting with anticipation for him to tell us about his new project in the near future. When it happens, we'll have the big announcement right here on Vinyl City Broadcasting. And yes, Abe, you're welcome to come back on the show anytime. If you've missed any of our shows, you can go to YouTube and type in Vinyl City Broadcasting or go to our website titled VinylCityBroadcasting.com and click on the link or button that says VCB to view any of our 11 shows. All contact information for Abe Santiago and where you can purchase his new book will be posted on our last slide. Also, if you go to Amazon, you will be able to read a few pages from this a cappella gem, a cappella living in the shadows. Well, let's go home, Rico, by way of Jersey City tonight. I want to show you where the Palace Theater used to be. Oh, 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 oh,